Hey everybody, this is going to be a playthrough of the Brigandoon adventure, which uh, is a is a short introductory adventure that came... Oh, it's not Brigandoon, it's Perils of the Lost Coast, but the first scenario is Brigandoon. Uh, Perils of the Lost Coast is a short introductory adventure that came in the box for Rise of the Rune Lords. So the Perils of the Lost Coast... The Lost Coast might be tame, but nowhere in the, for in the frontier lands of Verusia is entirely safe. Recently, gangs of Sarni bandits, unscrupulous human thieves, have targeted the people of the quiet town of Sandpoint. Dangers lurk in, sp in town as well, as several innocents have suffered the venom of a mysterious poisoner. But most fearful are the rumors of slaughtered livestock and death soaring on shadowy w wings. Sandpoint needs heroes. Are you up to the challenge? I think so. So that's that's the Perils of the Lost Coast. First scenario in the series is called Brigandoon, and there are four locations. Woods, waterfront, farmhouse, wooden bridge. If you've watched my playthrough of the Rise of the Rune Lords, um, Burnt Offerings, you'll recognize some of these locations. The woods we've been to before, the waterfront we've been to before, Farmhouse and Wooden Bridge is new, and the description of Brigandoon says the Sarni, notorious thieving wanderers, have long run con games around Sandpoint, but under the leadership of Jubrile Vis Visky, they've become much more ambitious and dangerous. Someone needs to put an end to their, bri their brigand brigandry uh, before more than coins and livestock are lost. So the villain of this is Jubrile Visky and then the henchmen are bandits. During this scenario, there's a global rule. If a monster's power causes you to recharge a card, draw a card after doing so. That's a bit of a boon, I think. Yes, it is. That's a really big boon for us. That's an advantage. Each character, if, if we complete this scenario as a reward, each character draws a random item from the box. That's pretty cool, too. Okay, so... Uh, and I should probably, yeah, I'll put that face up. I don't know if I'll remember to refer to that, that global rule. I hope so. I think I might be able to remember because, after all, it does help me. So for this adventure, unlike the Rise of the Rune Lords, because this doesn't continue after the Rise of the Rune Lords, I decided not to play Valeros and Sioni. And anyway, I like to um, experience different characters. So this time around, I'm going to play as... Harsk, the Dwarven Ranger, uh, the iconic Dwarven Ranger of the Pathfinder setting. Here's a little introduction to him. Harsk has always been an unusual sort of dwarf, preferring open skies to cramped underground halls, the flexibility of a crossbow to the sturdiness of an axe, and tea to ale. It keeps his senses sharp. A gruff and driven dwarf, he left his home to fulfill a vow of justice to avenge his brother's death at the hands of raiding giants. He has since learned much of the world, its lands, its beasts, and its vast array of people and places worth protecting. So he is a ranger. His deck uh, has a bunch of ranged weaponry, a little bit of armor, an ally, um, lots of focus on ranged. And in fact, I should say his special abilities that he gets straight away. I'll put a, up a graphic. Um, he's proficient with light armors and weapons. His hand size is five, and at the end of his turn, he may examine the top card or bot oh, no, top card of the location deck. Wow, so he gets to, f to scry for free. Well, that's huge. During my um, Rise of the Rune Lords adventure, I had Sioni having to cast a spell, detect magic to scry. You may recharge a card to add 1d4 to a combat check at another location. So recharging a card is, is relatively cheap because it means you don't have to discard it. You just put it at the bottom of your discard deck. And so he can be at a different location and still add a die to someone else's combat, which is really nice. Now, Valeros had a similar thing where he could add a d4, but he had to be at the same location. Here's Kira. She's the iconic human cleric of Saren Ray. And Kira and her family grew up near a small temple to Sarenrae, the goddess of healing, honesty, redemption, and the sun. When bandits attacked Kira's village, 
Saren Ray's priestesses defended the innocent, driving off the raiders at the cost of their lives and their sanctuary. Standing in the burned ruin of the temple, young Kira swore her life and sword to the goddess, promising mercy to the deserving and a quick death to those who spread darkness. Sort of, it's a variation. I mean, Valeros was kind of my tank, and this time it'll be Harsk being a tank at range. And then uh, Sioni was my spellcasting character, and this time around it'll be Kira doing the spellcasting, but instead of Arcane, it's Divine. I've loaded up all the decks. As with my playthrough of Rise of the Rune Lords, I have... Um, I, I say cheated. It's not really cheating. It's modding, I guess. I've loaded the waterfront up with a bunch of Skull and Shackles cards, which is a different expansion set. Well, it's a it's a different it's an adventure deck for a different Pathfinder card adventure base set. So it's not actually compatible. But I found it to be really difficult, and I just decided that might be fun. And I might be I might be playing with a little bit more of that in the decks going forward. I might not, but for now it's just mainly at the waterfront. I mixed in a little bit of skulls and shackles. I'm also thinking about changing the way that cards persist through adventures. I haven't figured it out quite yet, but um, I'm finding I, I found during the rise of the rune lords the the sort of the restriction to the deck list a little bit. I don't know. I mean, limiting, which I'm assuming is what the design is. I mean, that's part of the game is to be is to give you limited resources. It's just that I wanted more cool stuff. I wanted to play with more fun cards, not not cards that were more fun than the ones I had, just additional fun cards. Uh, and I, I felt like I was discovering cool cards and then unable to use them later. So I'm going to see how that goes. I don't know exactly what that's going to look like. Maybe it's nothing. Maybe it's something I'll try. I don't know. Um, okay, so we're going to start out here. And I am going to, I think, start out in the... Oh, and in my last uh, playthrough of the Rise of the Rune Lords, I kind of noticed that, first of all, I didn't read all the cards all the time, so I'll I'll try to be better about that. And also the... The rules, the rule book that is printed and distributed with the box, the card game, you know, the, the box that I purchased, it's been updated. So my paper copy of the rules are are kind of out of date. Um, the I guess the the current rules, the current rule book is posted as a PDF online. So I'm going to try when I look up rules, I'm going to try to defer to the PDF not the paper rule book because I feel like um I, I feel like that's just the more up to date way to play the game. Although, I mean this game I'm I'm really open to modding it to to my liking anyway. I did a little bit of that with Rise of the Rune Lord, probably some in unintentional, but that I'm I'm gonna be open to that this time around. Because the point of the game is to be fun and to be challenging and I wanna I want to do that. Okay, so I'm going to start with Harsk, because he's a ranger. He's probably scouting ahead. And so, I mean, I guess all we know about this adventure is that there have been some ro roving, roaming and roving bandits who keep talking about Gibral Visky, and we have reason to believe that they're hiding out in the countryside, up to no good. So we are out to, f to hunt them down and uh, to put an end to their banditry, or their brigandry. Uh, so Harsk is going to go, and when you start your turn, you tick over a timer deck, a timer card, which is just a countdown timer, and we're at the farmhouse. So the farmhouse says, Tall plants dominate the land around this otherwise unremarkable little farmhouse. High stalks and thick leaves turn the rows between crops into oppressive tunnels. Nearby stand the fields and muddy pens of various farm animals, though most are strangely empty. Between the fields and the house lie scattered farming implements, abandoned and left to rust. At this location, if you would discard an ally, bury it instead. Hmm, that's not good. So discarding... discarding... no, actually, you know what? That's not... I think in this 
particular case, that's not going to be that big of a deal. Because if you discard an ally, your chance of getting it back is pretty slim. So burying it just kind of solidifies that slim chance, reduces a, a 5% chance down to zero, pretty much. Summon, and that's not, not mathematically uh, calculated, I just made up numbers. Okay, so when closing, summon and defeat a random monster. Okay, so that could be that could be scary. But okay, so that's where Harsk is, and his first um, is so. I haven't drawn him a hand yet, have I? Um, oh, and my spellcaster was up here last time. Keep my keep myself from getting them mixed up. Okay. So his favored card type is weapon. So his initial hand gets to insist upon having a weapon. And, well, he got a weapon, so the Star Knife. This is nice because he can reveal this card to roll... Oh, Strength and Melee. I thought this was a ranged weapon, but I see now that it is not. It is Melee. Okay, that's not his specialty. His Strength is not terrible. It's a d6, so it's not bad. It's just not his specialty. His specialty is, is ranged attacks. But that's fine. He's got some blessings... He's got the Amulet of Life. Discard this card to reduce damage dealt by three. It's pretty nice. Potion of Vision. Banish this card and choose a character at your location to succeed at a perception check. Potions usually get banished. Uh, if, if you may have noticed during the last um, playthrough, if you watched my Rise of the Rune Lords, because the assumption is that you're drinking them and then they're gone forever. Uh, so... I didn't use them very much in the previous uh, game, and I'm going to try to try to use stuff up a little bit more. I think that that might be one of the limiting factors of me getting new cool cards, is that I just didn't I, I didn't get rid of enough cards when I had the chance. So he'll explore. Oh, this is nice. He really I really want him to get this because this is an arranged weapon. And he could he his ranged is his best skill, so this would be great for him. Dexterity ranged specifically, his dexterity is a d8, and he has an automatic plus three to that check. So he's got a plus three. Actually, you know what I should do is I should just use a specific die for bonuses. There, it's my shadow run die. Plus three for his ranged, and he needs a 6 on a d8, but he has a plus 3, so really he only needs a 3 on a d8. That's just so frustrating. He rolled a 1, uh, so he does not get to acquire this throwing axe. This throwing axe that is perfect for him it gets just put back in the box. Oh, it's so frustrating. So painful. Um, okay, so as you may know from my previous playthrough, if you watched it, I really like to maximize my turn um, actions. One of the main ways to do that is to burn through your blessings. Because if you discard a blessing, most blessings, I haven't seen one yet that, that's an exception to this, Discard this card to explore your location. So I'm going to discard that card. And then he gets to explore again. And there's an ally. This could be good, I guess. Uh, so let's see. Dexterity, Stealth, 7. Or Charisma Diplomacy. I am pretty sure Harsk has very low charisma. Yes, a d4. So that is his weakest trait. Uh, but... Dexterity is not bad. He doesn't have stealth naturally. But he does have that d8 for his dex. So we could roll that and just take our chances too. Alright, so Harsk is not rolling well today. That's that's what I'm picking up right now. That's too bad. Okay. Well... Harsk ends his turn with four cards. I mean, I could discard another blessing, but frankly, I'm just... 
I'm gonna give Harsker rest. I, th I think that he he's not. He, he got off to a bad start. Okay, so this is um, Kira. Her favored card type is a blessing, so she'll probably have a blessing in her opening hand because she's got like six blessings in her card, uh, in her in her deck. Her hand size is also five. She's proficient with light armor and heavy armor. Instead of your and her skills are or her powers, instead of your first exploration on a turn, you may reveal a card with the divine trait to choose a character at your location. Shuffle 1d4 plus 1 random cards from his discard pile into his deck, then discard the card you revealed. That is a very cool feat, because that, as I've said in the Rune Lord playthrough, your discard deck, or your, your draw deck, is your health points. So being able to take stuff back out of discard, remember how I said the chance of getting an ally back is like 5%? Well, with her around, I guess it's a lot better because you can just rescue stuff from your discard stack and put it right back into your draw deck, which, I mean, it's huge. It's, it's a healing spell. I mean, that's what it is, obviously. It's like laying on, laying on hands or channeling positive energy. You know, it's, it's, it's things that restore. So that's good. Add 1d8 with the magic trait to your check to defeat a bane with the undead trait. Add 1d8 with a magic trait to your check to defeat a bane with the undead. Okay, so that's like a turn undead, sort of, kind of stylistically. Um, okay, it's fine. So she'll, I think, just join him at the farmhouse, I think. Um, I mean, they could absolutely split up. Uh, but I, I don't see a particular advantage to that right now. So, she's got two blessings. So, she, so her requirement of her initial hand are satisfied. She's got a mace, a guard, ally, and a wooden shield. All right. So she's ready for anything. Blessing of Torag. I have a good feeling about her being able to acquire this blessing. A divine check... Of five. So her divine skill, or well, her wisdom skill is a d12, and her divine uh, skill gives her a plus two, a, a flat plus two on, on, on it, well, for her divine checks. So she's got two, she gets to roll a d12, she needs a five. So if she rolls three or better, unbelievable. She rolled a one. Oh boy, this is um, <laughs> this is not this is not going well. Um, it can only get better. That's the good news. Uh, okay, so where's the rest of her cards? There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna have her discard a blessing because I just I can't let I can't let that be her entire turn. So we're going to draw another card. Holy Candle. This is another divine check. This is a very cool card. You can bury this card, which means you don't get you to use it again this scenario, but you get to keep it in your deck. Bury this card to shuffle 1d6 random cards from the Blessings discard pile back into the Blessing deck. So that means that even though we're... Oh, I forgot to, I forgot to turn over a card for Kira's turn. Uh, so as we tick down on our timer deck, if we have the Holy Candle, she can bury this card to rescue six turns, essentially, back into back into the deck. That would be huge. So she's got a, bl a plus two for her divine skill, and she's got that d12 that she rolled a one on last time uh, for her wisdom. And she's now going to roll. She needs an 8 or better. She got a 5. So, no. She does not get the Holy Candle. Okay, so I've, I've encountered 4 cards. And I have failed the roll on, for every single one. It's a really, really bad start. Horrible start, really. Uh, okay, so she's ending her turn with four cards, therefore she needs to draw back up to five. 
She's got a cure spell now that's kind of nice. And a very, very cleric sort of expression, you know, like she's got that special skill to rescue cards from your discard pile. She's got a cure spell. It's really, really cool how well it comes through, like how the, the RPG classes really come through in this in this card game. We're going to switch over to Harsk here. We've only got four more cards in the farmhouse. One of them's probably a monster. I, I haven't looked lately, but uh, yeah, one's a... Th th three are a monster. One is a barrier. That doesn't make sense. We should have... Uh-oh. I must have shortchanged this deck. Because, um... I don't know what... I don't know what I didn't give it, but if there are three monsters here and one barrier, well, there's got to also be a henchman or a villain in the farmhouse. So that's that's inconvenient that we have not encountered. Yeah, I, I guess I must have had the wrong count. We'll, we'll find out. Um, if there's no henchman and no villain, then that'll at least tell me what's missing. In other words, I guess I'll have to look through the other decks and then shuffle them or something. I don't know. Okay, anyway, I've ticked over a timer card. It's Harsk's turn. He can now uh, take a look. It's a werewolf. Before the encounter, examine the top card of the Blessings discard pile. If the card is a Blessing of the Gods, the difficulty is increased by three. So this doesn't happen that often, really, but sometimes the top card of the Blessing deck, the Timer deck, actually matters, like what it what it is. Uh, well, I guess technically it, it matters every single time you have a Blessing of the Gods, because you can, with a Blessing of the Gods, you can mimic whatever's at the top of the deck. But this time, I mean, it's, it's a really, really important. Um, but this is not a Blessing of the Gods. This is a Blessing of Calistria, so... This encounter difficulty does not increase. It's just a normal 13. 13 is quite high. Looking at what we have to, to choose from here. Harsk has um, a pretty good ranged skill. And he's got this short bow. Now he can reveal this card to use his dexterity or ranged die. Which of course is a d8. And then he's got that um, plus, what is it, plus three to his rate for his, for being a specialist at ranged. I guess I'll put that there. Um, and then this card, by revealing this card, he also gets to roll a d6. So what we're really looking for here is a 10 after this is subtracted. So a 10 on a d6 and a d8. And how they've been rolling um, lately, I don't feel really great about this working out for for Harsk. Also, I forgot that Harsk has a special ability. At the end of his turn, he's allowed to look at the top card. He should have been doing that, I guess. I mean, he's only had one turn, I guess. That's not that big of a deal. But yeah, that's something to keep in mind. So anyway, if I use a short bow, I get those. Um, he's proficient with weapons. You may discard this card to add 1d4 to a combat check at another location. That does not help us here at all. So the one thing that I could do is play a Blessing of the Gods. Now the cool thing about this is that if you discard this, you can add one die to a check. I don't know what die, it doesn't say. Discard this card to explore your location. Yeah, okay. Or you may instead treat this card as if it was identical to whatever's at the top of the deck. And we know that this is Calistria. Let's see what she gives us, if anything. You can discard this to add a non-combat dexterity. That does not help us. Okay, I think I'm going to have to discard this card. Just because this is a 13 werewolf. I've got a cleric with me. I'm going to get my discards back. I think it's worth it. And I'm going to assume that I get to add a d8. It says add a die to the check. The primary die that he is rolling is his dex, so I'm going to assume that you just roll two, two of your primary die. 
Good thing, because that's a one. That's a really bad start. There's a two. So he's up to six total out of 13. And it, all he's got left is a d6. And he did five. So he he's done 11 points of damage, which is not enough to kill this monster. Technically, he needs to take two points of damage now. But he has this amulet of life. He can discard this card to reduce damage by three. He is definitely going to do that. And this werewolf is now undefeated. So the werewolf goes back into the deck. Now it's the end of his turn. So at the end of his turn, he's going to draw back up to five cards. Another blessing, some armor. He's still got two weapons. One of them is ranged. Using weapons generally does not require you to discard them, so that's nice. You just reveal them. Now, end of his turn, one of his skills is that he's allowed to essentially scry. So this is a potion of healing. All right, that could be good. And so we're going to turn over a timer card. We're going to let Kira encounter this potion of healing. And again, this is a potion, so it's going to get banished if we use it. But you can choose a character at a location, shuffle 1d4 cards from the discard pile back into the deck. So, I mean, that's always useful. Might as well, probably, I'll just use it right away. If I get it. Intelligence, d6. I'm going to use a different d6 because of dice rolling superstition. Um, these have all been rolling bad, so obviously I have to change dice because... That's how dice work, right? Five. Five. Superstition confirmed. Um, changing dice improves your rolls. Okay, so Potion of Healing 5 is acquired back er, or into her hand, and honestly, I'm just going to banish it straight away. I think, actually. Let's, let's look and see what Harsk... Okay, not straight away, because Harsk actually only has three cards in his discard pile. And, I mean... With the luck that I've been having so far, I will definitely roll a 4 on the d4, and 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 will have wasted a little bit of healing. So I'm not, I'm not going to do that. Um, what I can do, though, is discard a Blessing to explore again. This could be the Werewolf again. I don't know. Nope, it's a large chest. The difficulty to defeat the barrier is increased by the Adventure deck number, which is... One, I think. Okay, maybe there's... There is no adventure deck number. This is adventure B, as in beta, and so there is none. So this difficulty does not increase. If defeated, you get to add 1d4 random weapons. To defeat it, it's either strength melee 10 or dexterity... Disable 9. I got a perception bonus. I've got healing. That's it. So she doesn't really have anything to help her with that particular check. Her dexterity die is a d4. That there's absolutely no way she could succeed at that particular check so this is just it's undefeated but there's no penalty you just you just don't get the stuff in the box okay so now she's got five so she doesn't have to draw and it is harsk's turn so we'll flip over a timer card hey that's a blessing of oh yomide never mind and oh harsk get back over here harsk okay so Harsk is um, going to explore. Ah, this is the henchman. Okay, so I cheated um, by not having enough monsters in this pile. And, I mean, not on purpose. I just somehow missed, because this is the werewolf, right? Yeah. So um, I, I should have had two more monsters in this pile, and I didn't have two more monsters. So I don't know how I did that. I'm I'm afraid now that some other locations probably ended up with two more monsters than it should have. 
So that'll be fun to experience, but it's fine. Before the encounter, exchange a card of your choice from your hand. No, recharge, sorry. Recharge a card of your choice from your hand. Okay. Whose turn is it? It's Harsk's. Okay, cool. He's got to recharge something. Um, I think he's going to recharge this potion of vision, because it's not doing him any good. Uh, and recharging, of course, is just putting it at the bottom of his draw deck, so it's not really that big of a deal. Um, and he needs an 8 to defeat this guy. Of course, we know that he has a 3 automatic to his decks, and then he gets, if he uses his short bow, he can get his d8 dex die and his short bow die a d6. Trying to get essentially a 5 across these two die. Seems like it should be possible. There's a 6, so he did it without even having to roll his standard dexterity die. So the bandit is defeated. That's good news, and it also means that we can close this location, which I I don't really need to hesitate to do because we know what that is. It's a werewolf. Oh, but wait. When closing, summon and defeat a random monster. Well, I could summon and defeat a random monster. I could reach over into my monster deck here and bring out a Zulgath and defeat it. But Azulgath is only nine is only nine. So I might as well just do that instead. Before the encounter, examine the top card. If it is the blessings of the gods, this goes up. It is not. I noticed when I turned it over that it was blessing of Yomede or Iomede, however you say that. I think it's Yomede. Um and so he's a thirteen, just a normal old thirteen. No no big deal. Um, I'm kidding, it's a big deal. It's a really atrocious DC or AC or HP, um, all, of, all, all, all two of those, AC and HP, HP, mixed together. Blessings of the Gods, I think, could be worth doing here again. I know I, I wasted that already, but you know what? We're going to get those discards back, I happen to know. Wait a minute. Blessings of the Gods means that I can emulate the top card if I want. Is there anything special about the Blessing of Yomide? No, not really. Okay. So I'll just discard that. He'll use his short bow again on this werewolf. It's not silver tip, that's the problem. Uh, he's got his plus three for dexterity, he's got his d8, he's got a d6, and then because he just used a blessing, he's gonna roll a d8 twice. Okay, so. What do we need? We need a 10 across 2d8 and a d6. 4. Not a terrible start. Not great. Not terrible. d8. 7. There you go. Um, well, we don't even need the blessing of the gods uh, because we got 11, 12, 13, 14. The werewolf is vanquished. I guess he did have a silver-tipped arrow after all and pierced this lycanthrope through, skewered it. It is gone. And that location is closed. So we have secured the farmhouse, even though I cheated by um, nerfing it with two fewer monsters than it was supposed to have, but I did choose the harder monster to, to, to fight in order to close it. So, And I failed my first four rolls. What are you going to do? I mean, it was difficult enough, apparently. So the, the farmhouse has been closed. That's great. Uh, end of Harsk's turn, so we'll just draw back up to five for him. Oh, he's got his light crossbow now. That's exciting. Um, and I need more d8s and more d4s and lots of more dice, really. Uh, so that's that's good. So next 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 round will be Kira's turn, and we'll send her. I don't know. Somewhere. Uh, well, yeah, we'll send her somewhere. Probably into the woods, if I'm honest. But we'll we'll think about it. Anyway, that'll be next time, so thanks for watching.